So I'm getting ready to cut. Again, I'm going to tell you that this job is usually a whole lot easier if you can do it standing up. But if I was standing, you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. So um, I'm going to do it sitting down. Um, let's talk about scissors. The silver scissors that we have in the classroom, those are right-handed scissors. The orange handled ones are the left-handed. And when you are cutting with paper scissors, I don't have left and rights, but when you're cutting with fabric, you definitely need to use the one that works best for you because it allows you to see where you're going. So, um, like I said, when we were trimming the pattern, you always want to cut counterclockwise if you are right-handed, and you want to cut clockwise if you're left-handed. Your thumb should always go in the little hole. I usually put my last three fingers into the bigger hole, and I keep my pointer out, and that helps me guide. It just kind of gives me a little bit more firmness. If I'm left-handed, same thing. I'm going to put my thumb in the smaller hole, and I'm going to put my, my pointers hanging out, and my last three are going to be in the bigger hole. All right? I don't usually use these scissors. I have my own pair, and again, I have damage to my hand, so I have to be careful about what I use with it. So um, I actually have these purple ones that are kind of similar to these, except for the, the holes are in the opposite direction. So um, these are the scissors I'm going to use. And again, the first thing I want to do before I cut anything is I want to check all along the selvage and make sure that there aren't any pins hiding underneath the pattern that I might accidentally hit whenever I am cutting. So trying to cut out individual pieces when you have a great big huge chunk like this is difficult. So the first thing I'm going to do is rough cut. That means I'm not cutting on the cutting line. I'm cutting kind of in between the pattern pieces. And I'm going to do that here, being very careful because mine are very close together here. But I'm not cutting anything off. And then I'm just going to cut all the way over to the other side. Again, I want to keep it as flat as possible so it doesn't shift around on me. And then now I have two much smaller pieces. And I'm going to fold this one and put it out of the way, and I'm going to do it later. And then I still have kind of a big piece, and I've got these two guys over here, and I'm going to rough cut those too. So again, in between the pattern pieces, I'm going to cut. I don't want to cut any of the pattern off if possible. It's kind of in between here. all the way to the top, all right? Now I'm going to cut these separately again later. I'm going to concentrate just on doing the front piece since it's a little more complicated. Um, and remember, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to go uh, counterclockwise. And I'm going to start up here at the top. You actually could start anywhere, um, but I'm going to start up here at the top. And one of the things I have to remember is don't cut my notches off. Those are there for a matching point and I'm this is a size medium so I'm making sure that I don't cut off my medium um, any of my medium uh, notches and I'm also doing one last check to make sure that every single pin is inside the cutting line. One more thing that you might notice along here is that um, I actually had to redraw my cutting line over here because I had this little bump hanging out and um, I you know, can't have a little bump in my seam. So from the notch down to where the hem starts, I redrew that line so I have a smooth angle there. And I guess I will start at that spot since I'm already here. So my um, scissors are in my right hand because I am right-handed and I'm gonna keep my non-dominant hand flat on top of the paper because I don't wanna be cutting up in the air. That shifts everything around. So as much as possible, I wanna keep it flat and also as much as possible, I want to cut in long continuous strokes. So I'm going to scoot my scissors in as far as I can get them and then following the cutting line, which is the solid line, I don't want to cut it off, but I want to cut right next to it and then I cut up to my notch. I did not cut through it. In fact, I put my scissors in so that I knew it would end right before there. 
I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to cut backwards this one time because it's easier to do it that way and get that little, little notch trimmed off. And now I'm going to come in and clip just, and I'm just using the tip of my scissors because I don't want to cut into my um, seam allowance. So I'm going to clip right there and then I'm going to wiggle my scissors around and then cut along that straight line. Again, this job is a whole lot easier do, to do standing up. Okay, so now I've got all of this complicated stuff that I have to do around here. And um, so I want to just be careful as I'm going around my curve that I don't cut into the cutting line. If you notice, I'm moving my arm and my hand to get it so it comes around. And I want to have that nice and smooth because that's going to be my center front seam and I want to cut up to where that goes, but I don't want to cut it off. Now, this little flappy thing right here is going to cause me problems, so I'm just going to snip it off um, so that it is not in my way when I try to go around that curve. And I'm going to turn the whole thing around just to make it easier to go around that curve. I think I'm actually going to take this off right now. I'm going to keep this on here so I can um, wear them around my neck. But. Uh, it's getting in my way. All right, so I am right at the bottom of the curve, and I want to be really careful not to cut off any of the part of that uh, fake fly that I'm making. And I'm cutting right along that curving line. If you notice, my arm's getting kind of at a, at a weird angle. So I'm going to stop and turn my fabric. There's nothing wrong with stopping and turning your fabric. Make, make sure that you are, like it's easier for me to go kind of from right to left as I'm cutting. Um, and then I can always see my line to make sure that I am cutting right next to it, but not cutting it off. I don't want a big gap there, but I want to still be able to see the line. All right, again, when you get these little doodads like that, just get them out of the way. And now, sometimes it's easier if I cut straight across like this. So I'm gonna put the point of my scissors right even with where that line is, and I'm going to clip right to that and stop. This is the one time I'm going to, to break the rules and cut the opposite way I should, but I don't want to, it's going to be hard for me to get in there and turn that corner. So I'm going to make sure that I don't cut any of my line off, and just for that little tiny distance, I can cut backwards. And it's hard for you to see, but I really didn't cut as accurately there because I was cutting um, where I couldn't see the line. So I may try to trim that just a little bit more. There we go. I think I did a little better job the second time. And I'm not going to cut all the way around here, but I do want to uh, cut down the side. Uh, you're going to cut all the way around yours. I'm going to want to cut down the side where all the notches are so you know what to do. And again, I want to keep this fabric as flat as possible. Don't lift it up in the air because it will uh, cause your fabrics to be uneven. Okay. Now, we've got, you're going to have some of these pieces that are actually big enough to test your sewing machine with. And just throw those into your bag. These little skinny things aren't worth anything. So those are going to go into the trash can. And our paper scraps need to go in the recycling. But these bigger chunks like this, I know that's not a huge chunk, but you can use that to test your machine. So hang on to those. All right. Now I'm going to go down the side where the uh, notches are and show you what to do with those. Because we don't want to go in and out and in and out and in and out down this side. That's ridiculous. Because the only one we're going to match is that one right there. We don't need all those extra little teeth sticking out. So I'm going to cut smoothly down this side. And I'm going to cut off the notches until I get to the medium. And then I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to do that little thing where I go back in towards the seam line and clip that out. And then I'm going to, that real short cutting, just with the tips of my scissors towards the seam line, or the cutting line, and snip it. And I'm going to wiggle my scissors back in that little corner, if I can get in and around. And then I'm going to 
cut off the other one and I'm just going to continue cutting my fabric all the way down that side. Okay, I'm going to, I might as well just go ahead and cut this last little bit off because this is the, the very bottom of my pattern. Oh, now I noticed right here, I, the, the point of my pin is sticking out just a little bit too far. I'm going to move it back so it's out of the way. I don't want to hit it. I don't, it wasn't over the line, but it was pretty close to the line. I didn't want to accidentally hit it. I want this nice and smooth and straight all along here. And that's it for the shorts front. Now, if you were doing the the shorts without the extra fly, then you're going to cut along this center line that you should have drawn on there. Um, and really, if you when you're getting ready to cut, if you're not sure, ask me um, to check right before you start cutting because we don't want to cut anything wrong. So here's my my um, my front all cut out. I'm going to go ahead and cut out the other pieces. Um, and then we'll get back together when it's time to mark things.